Bio versus Solar. Solar took a massive lead in game number one, but the winner of the series or of the first map was the Terran player. The Zerg player for Samsung Galaxy with a good showing so far in this group, but falling off a little bit on the first map. Can he force game three or will Terran player Byung take it with a 2-0? He's starting to the bottom right now for his team CJ Enters. Very good decision making in game number one after his initial aggression was thwarted, was able to make it happen. And especially the Thor positioning against the road drop of his opponent was absolutely incredible. The upgrades coming through here. Very well played by Bjorn, and let's see how he's going to play game number two here on Frost, the map choice of Sora. Oh, this is Sora's map choice. He's not getting cross spawns, he's not that lucky with it. It's actually going to be horizontal spawns at bottom. Looks like he's going to go hatchery first here, as would be expected. Bjorn, on the other hand, do you see sometimes, every now and then, a Terran player will go hatch or a command center first on this map, but you always have to worry about an early pool, which is something that when it's when you're down in a series and it's your map pick and it's a big map and you choose it something you could do to mind game your opponent so, but uh going to play it safe he wants to scout get that early information and if you want to go into an early command center what you usually see is just getting the command center inside the wall yeah most Zerg players when they go for an early pool decide to go god knows why into an 11 pool uh, sorry a 10 pool against Taran, which is absolutely atrocious build because it bases the hopes on the Taran player placing the command center on the low ground but the normal build is definitely starting with gas and a reaper so that you get the scouting information of it and then can lead it from there. It leaves you less vulnerable against later attacks, not with a super early pool, but with, for example, a faster speed and then aggression against the natural on the low ground. Yeah, well, I mean, the only player to really go consistently on low ground CC first uh, was Marine King. Look what happened to him. Yeah, Marine King was Look always funny when you, <laughs> when you talk to him, he was always saying that he needs to change his build a little bit and that he needs to come up with additional openings, and then somehow he never really did. Yeah. Well, now he opens door and rings sometimes instead of uh, CC first. Yeah, that, will go, that goes for him. Lyote here looks on as the Reaper comes in. So does the Overlord. Spots him. So now he knows the angle of the Reaper's coming across. And uh, the Command Center will actually be made on the low ground here. After he scouts what's happening, CC first versus hatch first, gas before pool. And can't get that metabolic speed boost up very, very quickly. Starts it immediately, as you guys can see, his gas just disappeared. That's not CC first, though. Uh, not CC first, <laughs> CC on the low ground, I should yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, so. but he can't build it on the low ground now because he has the Reaper. Yeah. Like, he. Yeah, that's the only thing that the Zerg could. Uh, first of all, he saw already the base, so he yeah. knows that there's no early pool. Second of all, even if there is now a commitment with the Zerglings, the Reapers alone, two of them, can take the Zerg. Yeah, I, 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 just, I just meant to say he's making on the low ground. I'm not trying yeah, to correlate yeah. it to what happened with Marine King earlier. But, uh. No, no, right now we have, like, the base being built for Pyong as well, so normal Reaper into. Uh, what we've seen basically every single time we had this matchup so far. Yeah, you're, you're correct. I misspoke by saying CC first is not correct. Um, too stuck in the Marines, uh, Marine King. I was just thinking process. about late Marine King playing League of Legends, and my brain went a little bit weird <laughs> there. But. Marine King is streaming again, and maybe he's coming back to StarCraft 2, and not as successful in League of Legends as I've, well, I've heard he's not really successful in that. Well, yeah, I've heard uh, he didn't make Diamond, which is. Like a I pro have, player is kind of necessary. I have no idea. I am not a fan of League of Legends. It's great that it's get around, but in terms of MOBAs, I prefer Dota over, over League of Legends, and I have no idea of League. Well, I think Byung wants to start a third CC here, Calder, but he's got an Overlord in his main base, so he's really reluctant to show that. And uh, I don't know what's going on on the Korean stream, but the Korean casters keep laughing. Like This is not funny. This is very serious. In fact, we might have a Terran player in Kodas. <laughs> yeah, the first one after Maru, the first one to qualify. And we have still gas being taken here, and the Zerglings already rushing in, and they have speed by now. They see the Hellions and move back. More gas is now being taken for Solar, so he gets his queen out a little bit faster. Uh, sorry, his tech out a little bit faster. Not a lot of extra queens for him here. And for Byong, we have Mech. in the main base now. Yeah, first of all, he starts the second factory and therefore is going into Meg, but also the tech lab, which could lead into even a Banshee. Now, well, he starts the Viking first. Well, he could uh, also be going for triple Hellion production with Blue Flame and try to, to do a, a build where he's just trying to harass his opponent with Blue Flame Hellions, get some damage done early on. That's absolutely a possibility here. And he wants to come over here and poke a little bit with these units and maybe catch the drone that goes over to make a third hatchery for Solar if Solar wants to play Greedy. This is not the, the case. He's actually getting his lair up first, but there's the Blue Flame upgrade. Yeah, there's Blue Flame and uh, no 
nothing on the starboard just yet. The one Viking can shut down the scouts now. And so far, Sola doesn't know what he's up against. But he's going into two base layer and extra gas. It looks very much like he's going into two base mediums. Looks that way. We saw Leenok do this against Mech. Yep. And uh, transition out. He doesn't know that a Mech is what he's up against, though. His overlords are cleared out. He wasn't able to identify the second factory. It is two base mutas, as you identified. The Spire is going down. And he's just trying to clear up more overlords with the Viking, which will, you know, kind of annoy Solar, force them to spend some additional resources on making units. And these Hellions and, and the Reaper haven't actually crossed the distance on the map, so they don't know there's no third base, and they don't know that the Spire has been started, of course. He's going to have to scan for that, or, or see Mutalus coming towards his base, one of the two. Third has been started now, and Byung is really committing to a lot of Hellions, especially, of course, with the Blue Flame upgrade here. The wall at the front, that is what really comes into play. The question also, when exactly is he going to move out? Will Sola have the time to get Mutalus into the picture? Because then Byung's attack is not going to do too much, or shouldn't at least. But he's now starting to cross the map. The Zirkling sees the Hellions for just a second. A uh, nice lift on the, the supply depot oh. here, on the other hand. And but the last shot is not blue, so he doesn't see that. And there we go, a double evolution chamber. He's just now starting his wall, and it might be a little bit too late. This is so many units that Spinecrawler will not hold. That Spinecrawler will not hold. He needs transfuses if he wants it to hold. And so far, he has one. He has one transfuse, does drop it. The Queen getting very low as well. Does he have a second transfuse? Well, not yet. Doesn't really look like it. And he's trying to wall. He's going in with the Lynx. He's doing what he can. He's pulling the drones into the main base. The Mural is on a jet just yet. He can Nine actually run building. through. He can run through. Here he goes. He runs through. The drones are exposed. The Mutalists are on the way, but they're a bit too late. He's just going for the Queens. The Queens are gone. And the Larva is gone here. He's used most of it, but the rest of them got roasted there by the Hellions. The drones. The Mutalists are eventually going to kill those Hellions, but not before all of the drones are toast. He is going to lose every single Harvester here if he isn't careful. He needs to somehow pull them away, but I have no idea how he's going to save his income. Yeah, his income is, is trashed here. He's got a third hatchery going up, but I mean, he's down to 21 Harvesters now. Hellion's still going strong. One more lineup on those drones. Could actually kill two more. Well, he kills 28. He, I feel he could... Oh! oh, no! oh there we oh, go! Oh, he stacks him again! Oh! Four more Hellions on that one 13. shot! He has 13. The only hopes for Sola are is, is to move across the map and do a lot, a lot of damage because there is no anti air. Those turrets. missile turrets, on the other hand, that's very different. And the bunker, just to put the Marines inside. He's just going to mass out these turrets. The first turret will go down. And you know, he's... <sighs> There's going to be repairs on the rest of the turrets. Hellion's actually walking through. Look at all his Ethan chambers. That's, those are minerals he wishes he had right now. And he doesn't finish a few of those turrets, but the, the Hellions are going to clean up the last of the drones. He's going to go down to zero drones. And the rest of these turrets will just be repaired. And it looks like we may have our first Code S qualified Terran. Yep, it really looks like Byung is the first one to join Maru in the ranks. Going in right now and with only 13 Harvesters and the Hellions moving into the main base once again. It really doesn't look like Sola stands a chance here. He's already down one map and this is gonna seal the deal in game number two for him. GG! And Byung advances to Code S. The Terran okay. hope. This could be, uh, Terran fans look out for this guy because he played really good games today, some really solid mech play we saw in his, his TVZ. And Solar is no pushover, we talked him up a lot. He's not out of this group yet either, but he's a really tough opponent to 2-0 in such a way. And if you can do that, then you're probably going to have a pretty good showing against Zerg players you meet in Code S. So look out for this guy going forward for the next season of Code S. Seriously, one of the top Terrans right now. That was really well done here by Byung, and it was a good opening for him. So Sola falling down into the Constellation match when 0-2. And the next game that we're going to see is going to be that Losers match that we've been talking about already a little bit. We have in that match Fantasy going up against Super. And the winner, of course, then has to face Sola to find out who's going to be player number two to advance to Code S in Group E today. Yeah, so we're going to have that match after just a quick five-minute break. We'll go into that Losers match, so stay tuned.